Next section in our chapter on psychological disorders are the personality disorders. Now, this is going to have um, a little bit of overlap from our, our whole chapter on personality and personality theory. Okay, but this time we're going to talk more about how uh, a person's personality can, as you remember, the definition of the of abnormal behavior is a person's personality uh, is causing uh, distress, dysfunction, all right, on the self and or others. Okay, so here's your definition of a personality disorder, much like I just said. And what's important to remember here is there's not a whole lot of treatment for people with personality disorders. It's simply a diagnosis. And yes, some treatment can help people um, adjust their ways of thinking a little bit, but a lot of times therapy is geared toward teaching family and friends how to cope with an individual with a personality disorder. So that's that's uh, something that's important to remember. Well, it's also important to remember that there are seven of these as we move forward. Okay, so here we go. I'll try to cover them as quickly as I can in the time allotted. Our first personality disorder all right, is called a schizoid. And every one of these, I'm going to try to give you a nickname to go with it to help you remember uh, what, they're, what they're about. A schizoid can be nicknamed a loner. They're very cold, distant, unfeeling personalities. Um, and... Oftentimes, they don't mind that. They uh, lack the ability to want to be with other people. They lack the desire to form or hold a relationship. And so that's why people who are schizoids often rarely, I should say rarely marry, and often work alone. So here's some examples of some jobs a schizoid personality uh, might drift towards. You can see these are jobs where they're often isolated and there's not a whole lot of social interaction. Uh, with that said, there is social interaction. Those social interactions with schizoids are often with uh, non-human uh, beings, like objects, say a guitar, okay, or more likely uh, a strong attachment to an animal. That's a schizoid personality. Then we've got what's known as a paranoid personality. A lot of overlap here with an anxiety disorder. Sometimes it can be misdiagnosed, so just be, be mindful of that. These are very guarded, secretive people with overlapping generalized anxiety or schizophrenic-like behaviors. They're constantly on the lookout for clues or suggestions that might validate their anxieties, okay? So they are hypervigilant. Um, when it comes to this, they can pay very close attention to the things that cause them anxiety and ignore the things that might relieve that anxiety. Obviously, someone who's a paranoid personality is going to be suspicious and highly mistrustful of others. There you go. There's your worrier. Um, oh, excuse me, also frequently feeling taken advantage of. A uh, Another one that is going to sound a lot like another mood disorder is someone who's diagnosed borderline. Borderline personalities are nicknamed shifters. They can be very moody, all right, uh, shifting from high to low moods, and in the middle of all that, uh, high risk takers and impulsive like actions and behaviors. This is going to sound a lot like uh, bipolar, and yes, it can even be mis misdiagnosed. So, someone who's borderline lacks the emotional control, like someone who's bipolar, but then there's this reckless characteristic to them and a tremendous fear of abandonment. Once they uh, create a relationship, they fear that that relationship might go away, which of course leads to lots of these unstable relationships due to that fear of abandonment. Okay? Furthermore, they tend to view things in extremes, such as all good or all bad. They can deeply, deeply fall in love, and then at the at, at one single uh, flip of a switch, it could turn to a deep hatred or deep sadness because of, like I said, some, some event in the environment, let's say. Okay? Um, when that happens, they can be easily triggered, all right, followed by uh, episodes of intense anger, possibly even episodes of self-harm, such as uh, self-mutilation, -mutil or sprees, as it says there. They could go on a shopping spree, an eating spree. They could even go on a reckless driving spree as a uh, completely exaggerated um, reaction to some event. That's your borderline personality. And I want you guys to, to try to think about people you might uh, associate with who fall into some of these. Maybe not a, full, not a full diagnosis, but hopefully this will help you connect 
with people in your lives uh, and, and give you a better understanding of why they are the way they are. Because after all, it is their personality. Okay, next is a histrionic personality. Now, histrionics are seekers. They are people who are in constant need of attention. And they will do almost anything to get that attention. Because why? They want approval. Approval of everybody. So these can be people highly engaged in social media. All right. They can be overly charming. In fact, very flirtatious. Even inappropriately flirtatious or seductive. Furthermore, uh, their, their emotions are intense but unstable, much like borderline, uh, with high focus on their self-image. That self-image, okay, it's important to understand, is not linked with a high self-worth. It's what do other people think of me and my image? That's where histrionics have a big, a big downfall. Okay, and because of this insincerity, much like a borderline, long-term relationships also fail. Okay, so again, that's a histrionic, that's what we call seekers. Moving right along, all right, we've got our avoidant personality. I want you to look at this one and, and see which one it reminds you of. The nickname for an avoidant is an unwanted loner. Okay, so I gave you the nickname of a loner before. These people are alone, but they don't want to be. Okay, and the reason why they're alone is they've got tremendous fears of rejection or embarrassment, possibly from some um, poor or unfortunate childhood experience where they were rejected also okay, by a parent, by family members, friends that cause trauma. Unlike the schizoids who are loners, these people want a relationship, but because their confidence is so low, they will often stay indoors. Um, avoid social situations all altogether. Okay, why? They're overly self-monitoring. They're double and triple checking the things that they say to someone else. The, the triple, quadruple checking a tweet, posting something and then deleting it later because of that fear of embarrassment and being um, isolated, let's say. Okay, that's an avoidant personality. These are people who really struggle to... to um, uh, overcome those fears or conquer those fears, let's say. Okay, again, an avoidant. Next, and I'll try not to get political. My, that's not my intention. I'm going on, on uh, what's in the media is a narcissistic personality disorder. So a narcissist is nicknamed the man or the woman. Someone with a tremendous amount of self-importance and all about me kind of attitude that we sometimes see in childhood uh, with an, an additional lack of care for anyone, maybe even anything, okay? Someone who's narcissistic will often take credit for his or her successes, blame others for his or her failures, okay, with frequent lies in between. The reason why I've got a picture of the president here is Howard Gardner. Okay, Howard Gardner popped up uh, in our chapter on intelligence He's a Harvard professor of psychology, and look, I'm just taking his words because I thought we could we could relate. He's very much in our uh, view right now, okay, with his daily press conferences and things like that. Just ask yourself, is he, like Howard Gardner says, a textbook case of narcissistic personality disorder? Uh, you, you take a, a closer look at the things he does and the things he says, sometimes it lines up, all right, as... Uh, his quote from uh, The Tonight Show one night, where I never apologize because I'm never wrong. All right. The uh, symptoms of someone nar narcissistic, very similar to histrionic. So just understand that these do overlap. So they, it makes it for uh, a difficult diagnosis sometimes. Okay. There's your narcissist. All right. Should be on to our last one. All right. This is, an, this is one that used to be called psychopath. Um, in psychology, we call it antisocial personality. It is the con man. So nowadays, the word psychopath is, is not as, as used as the word sociopath is now. A sociopath, or someone who is antisocial, is someone who displays patterns of violent, criminal, and often unethical behavior, and, like a narcissist, has the inability to feel affection for others. So yes, they can be engaged in criminal activity, but maybe not the criminal activity you're thinking of with mass murdering and, and things like that. Okay, the profile of a, of a sociopath typically is male, and it's identified prior to the age of 15. What, what are some of the 
early warning signs. Uh, males, early teens, preteens who often lie, get into fights, uh, steal, and uh, early sexual behavior. Okay, the, I like this here. They they are uh, often emotionless. They feel and fear a little. Sometimes uh, reports will say that sociopaths or antisocials are warning signs are kids who set fire to things, who hurt or torture animals, and don't feel any sort of empathy for those actions. If you want a, an example of a uh, of someone diagnosed antisocial, take a, take a look at a documentary of Henry Lee Lucas. A&E did a documentary on him. I think there's even some Netflix documentaries. Henry Lee Lucas uh, was one of the more notorious serial killers. He claimed to kill over 350 men, women, and children. Now, there's no documented proof of all these 350 people. He could be lying, uh, but there is some evidence that ties him to to a few murders, murders uh, in particular, one of them being his, his mother, okay? That's Henry Lee Lucas. Um, interestingly, though, when you hear a lot about sociopathy, sociopaths nowadays, they come in the form of your CEOs, lawyers, politicians. Because look at the definition. Patterns of violent, criminal, or unethical behavior. Think about the number of doctor, not doctors, maybe not, but CEOs, lawyers who are unethical and engage in criminal activity, politicians. You could see sociopaths uh, are starting to occupy those roles. Why? Because that's how they feel they gain their power, how they climb the ladder is by uh, abusing others, taking advantage of others. could be a clear sign of sociopathy. Okay? All right, very good. I hope all of those make sense and you can maybe think of someone, whether it's uh, someone in your life or someone in a TV show or movie that sort of meets these criteria for personality disorders, that's going to make them easier for you to understand. When we try to explain these now, uh, we can explain a personality disorder, say, biologically, for example. Um, late 90s and early 2000s research said that there might be some differences in the frontal lobes of, say, someone with uh, antisocial personality and someone who, who is not diagnosed APD. And look at the, the brain scans. Okay, Much different activity in the frontal lobe of... Uh, a convicted murderer compared to a uh, normal human being. You can see right there, the frontal lobe much more inactive. The frontal lobe is our impulse control center, so perhaps sociopaths are much more impulsive. Slight genetic evidence, okay, so not a whole lot to go on there with some personality disorders, but this is my favorite one. It's called emotional deprivation. Look at this quote. The child for whom no one cares, cares for no one. Think about that. The child for whom no one cares, cares for no one. What a strong statement as to how important childhood is. If a child grows up in a home where he is cared and loved, that speaks volumes. But what also speaks volumes is a kid who gets no love, no affection. And how can we even be surprised that he has that same mindset when he's an adult and wants to take advantage of people and hurt other people. He, was, he wasn't taught anything else uh, when he was little. There are some family influences too. Two personality disorders and sociopathy particularly uh, is coming from more impoverished areas of, of the country or parents not teaching proper rules when, when children are, are little uh, could be social or like we say, family influences to, to personality disorders. Remember, these are these are diagnoses, okay? Um, but there's very little things we can do to change a lot of these personalities, especially say narcissists or um, histrionics. It's understanding how to live with them, live alongside of them, as uh, is key. All right, there's the personality disorders. Thank you for listening. Uh, good luck with the questions.